the Sony a7 Mark III. It's one of my cameras. It's quite a popular camera at the moment because it's full frame, it's quite small, but there's one thing that you will hear a lot when you watch YouTube reviews of this camera, and it is this. Impressive dynamic range. And this camera really does have a very good dynamic range. And that means that you can pull loads of details out of the shadows and loads of details out of the highlights. You can recover it all and get loads and loads of detail in your images. But with all these very techy reviews on YouTube, with this big emphasis on getting the detail back out of the shadows, I think this plants a seed in your mind. It's just something there in the back of your mind when you're taking photos, when you're editing photos, that if you lose details in the shadows or the highlights, that's in some way bad and you shouldn't do that. And I think that is a mistake. Because I get a lot of portfolios sent to me, people want me to critique and review their work. I would love to get back to everyone, but I simply can't just because of the sheer volume of emails I get asking me to do this. And also, I think a lot of the time, the feedback is more complex than I think people think. Any quick comments would maybe be too superficial and too glib. But one thing I do see a lot in these portfolios is very often people will be pulling back their shadows and pulling down their highlights to quite an excessive degree. And I find this problematic because what happens when you do that is that everything in the shot becomes a kind of equal tonal value. And that means that everything in the shot kind of has equal importance. And while this kind of look can be appropriate for some things, when it's done with portraits and street photography and other things, I find that the image has a lack of focus. And I don't mean focus as in sharpness and blur, I mean narrative focus. I do not know where I am meant to be looking in the shot. It's too busy, it's visually confusing. And when people do this to an excessive degree, you get this kind of HDR look. And common comments I see when people put this kind of HDR work on social media are from people who maybe aren't photographers and they go, oh wow, that looks like a painting. And you get this comment a lot and sometimes people actually won't believe it's a photograph. They, they will argue in the comments that it is a painting. And what I think I'm, they mean by this is it has a kind of unreal quality to it. What I don't think they mean is that it looks like a Caravaggio or a Rembrandt because those painters popularized a technique known as chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro comes from the Italian words chiaro meaning bright or clear and oscuro meaning dark or obscure. It refers to a technique that became commonplace during the Baroque era where painters would employ strong use of contrast to achieve a sense of volume. This was quite revolutionary for the time. While before every inch of the canvas would be filled with sharp detail, now painters would leave large areas of the composition as pure shadow with no discernible information visible. And this technique has carried through strongly into photography. Take a look at this image by Horst P. Horst from 1940. This is a great example of chiaroscuro in photography. It was a shot for Vogue magazine of ballerina and movie star Irina Badanova. Vogue editor at the time, Edna Chase, expressed her dislike for this image as it threw Irina's face into complete silhouette and it didn't show her outfit clearly enough. But imagine just how much atmosphere this image would lose if Horst had lit this shot differently with her face brightly exposed. While the lighting in Horst's photo was all meticulously calculated to achieve the exact look he wanted, this portrait of Zadie Smith by Linda Brownlee achieves chiaroscuro using only the available light in the room. She positions her as a small figure surrounded by this large expanse of darkness. This really adds to the slightly pensive expression she has on her face. This image has a sense of isolation, similar to that which was so characteristic of Edward Hopper's work. This photo of Billie Holiday by Dennis Stock shows very little detail of the singer, with most of the shot falling off into complete darkness. We get enough information to understand what's going on, but with such a minimalistic composition, every part that we can see gets much more attention than we would normally give. The details presented to us gain a value and a significance greater than we would normally ascribe to them. Trent Park is well known for using light to isolate elements within urban landscapes. Here we see a group of people waiting expectantly for a bus. The hard light of the sun is so bright that exposing for it throws everything else into extreme darkness. The effect isolates and highlights the figures, 
while the street becomes a scene that seems less familiar than it should be. The darkness here simplifies this composition. Darkness in your images is not something that automatically needs to be corrected. It can be used to evoke atmosphere, to draw the viewer's eye in order to tell a story, or just to simplify a composition. Try using darkness as a canvas to showcase light. Really think about what you can do with light. Look for shafts of light cutting through gaps. Look for reflected light from buildings. Look for diffracted light where sunlight is passing through some glass and the colour spectrum has become separated. The more you practice this, the more you'll start to see and understand light. But darkness is just as important as light. There's no such thing as a correct exposure. The right exposure is not an objective truth. It's a matter of opinion. Use exposure to create the feeling that you want. Less can be more. There's no need to be afraid of the dark.